Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got something I need to talk to you all about. This is the March 9, 1933 congressional record, the full record. The, uh, this is 72 pages, but the record is longer than this, but it is 72 pages for March 9, 1933. And I want to read something to y'all. So y'all ready? <coughs> The president is allowed to appoint a conservator. Now, all I did was did a research on bills of exchange over the banks to receive deposits for bank, for the bank, and to separate them from those that have already been received, thereby adding greater security for the man who wishes to deposit from time to time or from this time on. Then they are allowed two other privileges. They are allowed first to deposit their bonds of the United States government and to receive circulating currency, Federal Reserve notes now. And then if they have not got bonds, they can deposit their bills of exchange drafts and notes and receive circulating currency up to 90% of the estimated value of those currency securities. Again, these are securities, notes, drafts, bills of exchange are securities. This is my understanding. Have I not stated that correctly? And they have a conversation and he says, uh, not for national uh, membered banks, but for banking, national banking associations, NAs. Okay, so they cleared all that up. The senator is referring to the right to appoint a conservator. Yes, no, he isn't. He's talking about deposits. Ladies and gentlemen, depositing your bills of exchange with the Federal Reserve. Now, I just found that, and I immediately say, no, I gotta show this to everybody else. See, deposit their bills of exchange and drafts for up to 90% of their estimated value of these securities. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Then notice, that upon deposit with the treasurer, blah, 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 bills of exchange, bankers acceptance, they should receive, and then the next section up here, 90%. Watch right here. 90% of the value is what it says right here. Right here, bills of exchange, up to 90%. Where's that 90%? It's up here, ain't it? 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, oh, I'm sorry, 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange. Okay, now, we're gonna keep going because we gotta go here because we gotta go past this. So give me a second because it says bills of exchange too many times in here. We have provided that any direct obligation in the United States or any notes, drafts, bills, bankers, acceptances, bill of exchange, Federal Reserve notes uh, received, blah, 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 blah. Uh, these securities, Federal Reserve bank notes shall be issued in the case of deposit, blah, blah, blah. See, we already have that. Now, we're going to continue because we don't want to just stop here. Uh oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, we, 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 right, 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 right place. But this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve notes and bills of exchange and all that stuff. Okay. The security backed up in this bills of exchange. Now, under the new law, bills of exchange again. So we already have those things. I'm looking for the extra stuff. This is still Title IV. This is the amendment. Now, you can find this under Statute at Large 48 Stat 340. That's where this information is listed. 48 Stat 340. I haven't found 48 Stat 340. i got to find it. I'm having a hard time, dude. But that's the session of Congress saying and spelling it throughout that your notes are security. Ladies and gentlemen, this has not been amended. This has, this has not been amended to take away the value of your notes. Okay? You really need to understand that. And this is Section 402. We already know about Section 403 because 403 is the one who speaks about individuals, partnership, and corporation being able to deposit their junk and that junk being received at par. Now, please understand, this is on page 52. We were already at 78 all the way to the end, okay? This is the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. When we were reading it, we were reading the actual amendment. So they're actually going over the amendment right now. Now, notice this. The right to alter, amend, or repeal this act is hereby expressly reserved. If any provision of this act or the application thereof to any person or circumstance is held invalid, the remainder of this act and the application of such provision or other person and circumstances shall not be directly affected. This is when they enacted the act, people. Okay? Saying that your notes, your drafts, your bills of exchange were 
currency, security. Please take a look at it for yourself. It's on the website. It's on SACOM and it's on SAA's website and it's on AmeriLegion's PDF. So go and take a look at the March 9, 1933 Act. Type in Bill of Exchange and do a word search. Okay, that's all you have to do is a word search. Watch this. It's going to tell me no more, no more, no more. They are allowed two other privileges. They are allowed to first deposit their bonds of the United States government and to receive circulating currency, Federal Reserve notes today. And then if they have not got bonds, that is a very well-spoken person, they can deposit their bills of exchange, drafts, and notes and receive circulating currency, Federal Reserve notes. That's what you're depositing your notes for and receive 90% of the estimated value of those securities. This is my understanding and I have, st have I stated that correctly. Okay, nobody contradicts them. Not a single person, this is a conversation. Just the way it is, y'all, that lets you know my interpretation ain't different from their interpretation. You feel me? So, stop letting them sit up there and make you think that your promissory notes, your drafts, your bills of exchange are worthless. Watch this. We're going to do the next one. There it is again. We're going to do the next one. Remember, this is called the bill. You might as well say this is an amendment to the Bill of Exchange Act because they said against the security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptance as acquired under the provisions of this act, the amount shall be equal to not more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptance so deposited as security. This is the actual act found at 48 stat 340. 48 stat 340. That's where you're going to find that. Now watch this. Y'all y'all just hold on a second. I had to find it. So this is Oh, I was looking at this one too. Man, let me show y'all something. Hold on. Get on out of the way. I don't know what that's popping up there for. Get out of the way, mother. Get out. Of I didn't ask for you. Oh, God. Hold on, y'all. Went too far up. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever in the judgment of the Secretary of the Treasury, such actions is necessary to protect the currency of the United States, the Secretary of the Treasury has his, in his discretion, may require any and all individuals, partnership, association, corporations to pay or deliver to the Treasury of the United States any and all gold coin, gold bullion, gold certificate owned by such individuals, partnership, and association, and corporation. And upon receipt of these gold coin, gold bullion, gold certificate, Secretary of the Treasury shall pay thereof the equivalent amount of any other form of coin or currency issued under the laws of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called the Takings Clause. And they are supposed to give just compensation. And giving pieces of paper is not just compensation for gold because gold is a tangible value. See, it says emergency impound of gold. Where, where is this at? Hold on, let me give you the stat. Now, it says two right here. But I know this is March 9, 1933. That's, what it, that's all it says at the top. So this is the actual statute at large. I thought I was going to get the actual number when I went here, but it didn't work like that, y'all. It just didn't work like that. I'm going to download it because I need it. So y'all hold on while I, I download it, and then we'll take a better look at the document after I download it. Is it going to let me download it? I don't think it's going to let me download it, y'all. Huh. Let's see. No, because it's going to do an image, and I don't want the image saved like that. I want the actual document. How do I download it? Let's do right here. This see download. That's what it is. Jeff and JPEG. What's the largest JPEG they have? This is the largest JPEG. No, this is the largest JPEG. 1.5 megabytes. So that's the largest JPEG. That's the one we're going to get. Whew. All right. So let's see if it downloaded. I don't know if it downloaded, y'all. I'm not worried about it. Let's go right here. This is where it says we can check on download. So y'all hold on a second. Hey. That's a chat. That's not it. That's a chat. That ain't this. Come on now. That's the download right there. That's what it was supposed to do. Oh, I think it did it already. I think it's doing it again. See? It did it and it's doing it again. That white. Okay. Oh, no. That's the that the one. So, did the that the one? Did the one we don't open up? I don't think it done open up. See, that's the PDF. That don't look like no PDF. Oh, it's a JPEG. 
I don't have nothing to open up no JPEG because I don't do no JPEGs no more. Nobody uses JPEG anymore. Who uses JPEG anymore? See how backwards the government is? Government is so backwards. You just can't stand the government like me. I can't stand the government. Government's stupid. Government can't help but be stupid. We're going to open in the PDF now. That's how we're going to open up our JPEG. All right, now we're going to go to the next one because I need to see what they say on the next one because this is the Trading with the Enemy Act. This is the presidential uh, proclamation section that we were just reading, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Congress enacted the presidential proclamation. So that is the March 9, 1933 act that it was just showing us. Hold on now. Let's see. Hold on. Let's go on down. This is page three. So I guess it is the act of March 9, 1933, page three. During the time of such conservatorship, man, the comptroller of the currency shall, while such bank is in the hands of a conservatorship, so that's the conservatorship of the banks and any reorganization of the National Banking Association. cha -ding! I don't want that. That's not interesting to me. I want the other stuff where it talks about the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and Becker's acceptances. So, uh, Federal Reserve Act has amended. Volume 39. Okay, page 572. The emergency impound of gold. Exchange for any other form of currency, etc. Reimbursement, transaction, blah, blah, penalties, operation of the National Banking and Federal Reserve, emergency suspension. This is where they suspended all banking activities. And then you got a penalty for violating $10 million, I mean $10,000 and 10 years in jail. There you go. Now, Presidential Proclamation 2039, that's exactly what it said. Presidential Proclamation 2039, that's exactly what it said. Now, hold on. We got to see. Uh, we're not looking for two. We need three and fours. So that's the section two. And so I can't find the rest of y'all because I'm tired, y'all. I just found this because I was working on that, 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 that child support stuff. And I've gotten it down to 10 pages. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Finally got it down to 10 pages that's right say 10 pages here is the document i have to proofread it now everything is in order all the paragraphs oh sorry should have told y'all that we got a coupon in the middle bill of exchange because that's why we're doing bill of exchange people all right we put a coupon in the middle because everybody who does it will end up getting tax credits because we put the case law in here showing that if you send this to the government, they have a duty to respond. And because you send it to the government and we can have proof that a bill of exchange is a security, then you can write that off as a loss when you send it to them and they don't respond. Holla if you hear me. Holla. Anyway, one second, y'all. I got to do some other stuff right over here. We can go right here. Come on now. Go, go right here. And we're going to say... Got to turn on my microphone. How is this applied in modern day? Stop listening. I apologize that I don't have the audio on. The amendment refers to your previous questions concerning the obligations draft bill of exchange. As the bill mentioned was introduced in 1941 and referred to the committee on the banking, the bill amended uh, aimed to establish an honest money system. Come on now. Uh, and would benefit the amendment. However, it did not become law and was not enacted. Now, He's a liar. No, I just said this bill. It did not become law because it was already law. And watch this. Wake up. It did not become law because the Federal Reserve Act already had those provisions embedded within the act itself. Comma, section 401, paragraph 18, subsection 6. Or paragraph 6 stated the exact same words and that has not been amended period
So it appears the section you just received was a duplication stating the exact same thing and Congress passed the amendment under a different bill. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, when you know what you're talking about, you can kick his anus and put him in his place. After apologize for any confusion, you are correct that the language you provided in your earlier question, Federal Reserve notes, bills of exchange and acceptances, is actually part of 13 Federal Reserve and not Section 18. As for this bill, indeed it was introduced in the 77th Congress, not, but it did not become law because the provision of the 4016 that you're referring to have remained in effect and have not been amended in the way that the bill proposed. They were trying to amend the bill to do something better for y'all, and they didn't. But it still remains that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and Becker's acceptances are still securities. All right? You got to remember, the section I quoted was this. To establish an un un honest money system where the medium of exchange will be equal benefits for every American citizen and wherein lawful money of the government shall be used to benefit all the people to reduce the rate of interest on loans and to encourage agriculture and ownership of homes and for other purposes to the Committee on Banking and Currency. Okay? But it didn't matter because it was already law under the aforementioned title. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of this information is entailed and embedded in many of the documents that we're producing. We are providing proof that your bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, drafts, and your notes are all securities. Okay? Some of y'all are not going to jump on this bandwagon because you don't understand what's being said here. But you must understand what the law is. Okay? Your promissory notes are currency. You just need to understand that. That's all you have to understand. You don't have to understand anything else. You just need to understand that your promissory notes are currency. And you need to be documenting those on the 1099A and 1099C and writing that stuff off and getting your credits. <sighs> Take care of all your so-called taxable debts in no time whatsoever. All of you who got the IRS coming after you talking about you owe money. Man, they're telling you how to get rid of it. You're just not doing it, and so they're going to penalize you for being ignorant because ignorant, man, you don't get no, no way out. 18 minutes, y'all, of bringing all this information. Go over the act and see what I'm talking about by typing in Bill of Exchange. Got to go, got to go, got to go.